Hi everyone and welcome back to the Flight Briefing Room. In this video I'm going to be testing a wing. It's a wing that's been out a couple of years but I just wanted to know what was so special about the Judec Universal 1.1. It's a beginner wing, but is it? I have to say a big thank you to CM Paramotors for actually lending me a wing for this. Normally I'd have to buy a wing for me to review it. So thanks Clive for that one, much appreciated. So anyway, let's leave the Flight Briefing Room and I'll join you at the airfield. <laughs> Right, hello, Wingland. I'm going to carry on the review of this um, Universal 1.1, just so that I can uh, give it the full full profile from forward reverse or whatever. The wind's been variable, so I'm going to set up for a forward in a moment. But um, just so I do a little bit of an intro as to what I'm doing and why. Warming my engine up at the minute, but I'm just going to uh, cut it and then get myself set up. Uh, join me in a sec. Wow, that goes up quick. Needed a lot of brake to keep it above my head. Brake travel is very long on this, but that's for instance a beginner wing. So one of the things I've, um, I've noticed on people's reviews, when they start talking about speeds, and I put my hand up, my hand up, to say I've also been, uh, I've also been doing this myself, is people talk about speeds as being subjective. Because we look at our GPS, and my GPS is currently saying 48 kilometers an hour, 47, 46, 44, 45. So people go, full park, 45, 46 kilometers an hour, and I'm currently downwind. Then they go into wind to try and work out how much of a wind speed there is to then give you the wind speed. What I've got with me is an airspeed indicator. So I'm going to put the challenge out to everybody to stop talking about estimated speeds and actually show us videos. Hopefully this will work and I don't drop it and it goes through my prop. But so far this wing is very benign. It's lovely. So trimmed in, I'm currently doing about 21 miles an hour. Okay. Now some people will say that um, there may be some buffeting effect, but there is nothing hitting me at the slipstream in front. I am getting all the airflow here. There's nothing affecting it. So I'm content, unless anyone else can prove to me otherwise, that that's the wind speed. Fully slow with me on this wing at the moment. It's a universal 25 point, universal 1.1, 25.5. Fully slow and I'm 110 kilos and the max weight is 115. So that's where I'm sitting. I'm sitting five kilos below the max weight of this wing and that's the speed I'm getting. Because your wing loading will also affect your speed to some extent. So what I'm gonna do now, right, I'm now on 12. So that's halfway up the trimmers. And I'm now doing 24 miles an hour. And now hopefully I've got enough power. I'm gonna go fully trimmed out. Wow, you can feel the drop at that last little bit, even though it's just the last position. I'm going to call that 28 miles an hour. And I can't use the brakes at this trim setting, so I have to use the tor torque steel lines at the moment. But the one thing I have noticed, even though I'm fully fast on this wing, doing 27, calling it 28 miles an hour, 28 miles an hour. I'm not using anywhere near as much power as I would be trying to achieve the same thing with my other wings. And this is for level flight. So I'm just going for level flight and how it feels. And if, so my Hadron, I have to use quite a lot of power, about 700 RPM more to be fully trimmed out on that wing. But that is absolutely rocketing along. This wing feels very efficient just by looking at the RPMs. It was just turning with the, uh, the tip steering lines. It's actually quite, quite a positive turn. I'm at two and a half thousand feet right now. This wing does climb very, very easily. I think I have to try and come back down again. But if you look at this speed bar range, I don't know if the camera will pick it up at all. The speed bar range is absolutely tiny. So unless you're in absolute dire straits and actually have it connected, it's not going to give you that much more than the full range of trimmers are. But the advantage of the speed bar 
over trimmers, although you can't use the speed bar on this wing without the trimmers being out. The, the advantage of the speed bar is you can get rid of it really quickly, whereas trimmers you have to reach up, find it, and then pull it back in again. So I'm going to bring the trimmers back into the range. Now at the minute I'm going to go back to six, because that will allow me to use the brakes again and get more of a feel for this wing. But right now I have no issues with this wing and not really thought about the fact that it's going to take me off in some random direction. I can do stuff and it still be going in the direction I left it. So in that respect I'm actually really happy, it's a really good wing. Trimmer's coming in. Trimmer's back to six. Six is where I feel comfortable playing with the brakes and the, with the, uh, the wing in, in cruise. And it doesn't take much to turn it. it the, the brake pressure, kind of, uh, as you come down, you can see the tension coming down. And it comes to this kind of stop. So you actually have to want to do something to make it turn. But it does turn very, very nicely in terms of it's got a very flat turn. It's not a very rolled turn. So I'll try and show that, try and show that pull. That's not really doing anything, that's not really doing anything there. It's only when I pull a little bit more past the tension that the wing actually does anything. So whoever's flying it, it's going to get a feel of what's actually happening. That feels very loose when it comes to the tension and the wing is telling you, I'm there, I've got pressure. Feeling pressure in the wing is good. It tells you what the wing above you is doing. This is a kind of mid, high mid hang point. It's not a high, high hang point machine. So I'm actually getting some feel back from it. And actually if I pull it, it almost pulls up in the harness on the right hand side, turning right, and then turns in. So that's me doing nothing. So that's a, a non weight shifted brake turn. Let's see what happens if I do one to the left with weight shift. So look, lean, turn, look, lean, and turn much better. The leg starts to turn, then the brake just coasts it around. I can see now why so many people like this wing. It really is smooth, it talks to you enough. It's not gonna be like a free flight wing that shows you everything and tells you everything, every little lump and bump. I haven't felt any, any turbulence or disturbance in the air since I've been up. It does turn very, very nicely. So I'm going to try some more progressive turns and see what happens. So still in level flight. All clear. Slightly more aggressive turn. A lot more brake pressure required. Slight delay in it coming around, but it does actually, holding up. I've only got a, a tight, there's me going through my wake. There's the lumps and bumps. So it's got a very, very tight turn radius, but it's also very flat. It's not going to be highly cranked over and doesn't wind up on itself either. It's only when I start pulling more and more and more brake does it really start to wind up. There we go. It's starting to wind up. And it come off the brake, does it do anything? It just comes straight out. Hold the energy. And it didn't have any massive pitching there. I didn't really do much. I didn't hold much in the outside brake and it just recovered. So if someone gets them into a spiral, just easing up on that brake, it's not going to try and turn in on it. And that was quite a, a steep 360 there. And we lost about 700 feet of height there, so the, the actual rate of descent is quite high as well. Try it to the left. Holding that brake, holding that brake. And there we go, winds up, hands up. Doing nothing, doing nothing. Slight more pitch, maybe that's because I had the power on. And no need to uh, check the dive on that one. I was anticipating that, but I didn't want to, I wanted to see what the wing did without me checking it. Just to see, it's a very, very smooth pitch recovery. Try some gentle reverse turns. See what happens to the energy. Nice. Feeling the need for the outside brake there. Feeling the need for the outside brake. So it's talking to you because it goes light in the brake. There we go. I lost the tip because that knows that no outside brake. Tip collapsed on me. But that was me not having enough brake. 
So getting a few late in the day thermals and all it's doing is just talking to me through the seat board. Nothing really that I would go mm, unhappy about that. Not that it would be sort of joggling me around or anything like that. It's just telling me there was some air, air movement there. So this is very much a beginner wing, but with the trimmers out, it does become a different beast. And I can see why they lock them in for beginner flying. So I'm gonna bring the trimmers right in now and just see how it behaves in that configuration. So I'm going to do it nearer to the airfield. So even in a third out, I'm still sub, sub 6,000 RPM on this. And I know the wind's quite strong at height because we were zooming downwind. So while we're on the way back, um, launching. This wing is so, so nice to launch. And I don't like using the term nice without any context. So this is why it's nice for me. It inflates very easily because the cell openings are quite big. It remains above your head and will talk to you. So it needed, a, but it did, did, did need a fair amount of brake to stop it overshooting. But then, when it was pressurized, it just lifted you straight off the ground. Had no tendency to steer left or right. Just, just felt solid. Just felt solid. That's why, <laughs> subjective, nice. Um, it didn't feel like it was wandering off anywhere. It didn't feel like it was, I was having to fight to keep it above my head. It did a nice straight launch, wing popped up, slight correction on the brakes, check, check the forward movement, and then quite literally just ran into the air, got into the seat, and it was like, ah, oh, we're going up now. I can see why so many people have become fond of the Universal 1.1, and it, I don't know why more people aren't flying them. It's like you've got two wings in one. Close the trimmers, you've got a beginner wing. The moment you open those trimmers, it becomes a different beast. It's something that will allow you to play, it will allow you to spiral, allow you to wing over with more energy without too much of an issue of possibly getting into trouble. I think if you went to full nose down spiral, you may start having, because it's such a, a solid wing, you may need to work to get it back out again. So on the route back, I've had more time just to sit and ponder about this wing. Looking at it, looking at it above my head. What I have noticed is it's got split A's, but actually it's got two outer lines on the split A, which means it must need both those outer A's to induce big ears. So when I get near the airfield, I don't know if my engine does cut if the throttle goes to idle, always a backup, not if. Um, I'll induce big ears and see what happens. You could probably fly this wing in quite rough conditions and it wouldn't really batter an eyelid. It's got all the toys for cross country. It's got a tip steering uh, torque adjustment on both sides, whether you've got a torque left or a torque right engine, depending if it's belt or redrive. It feels a very efficient wing, actually. I really, really am not using a lot of power to fly and maintain level flight. And it seems to want to climb very, very well. Some wings are fast and don't climb. Others climb very well and aren't fast. This is a, it's got a bit of both. It is very, very much two wings in one, in my opinion. So you can learn on it and you can also do your cross countries on it without really going, I'm going to be the slowest guy in the group. Right, I'm going to clean the wing up and then see what happens with big ears. So smoothly to idle. Bring the trimmers in to, to fully slow. Come on. The trimmers are quite heavy, actually. There must be a lot of tension on those. Okay. We're going to go one and not really much rotation. Two big ears are in. And we've so about 500 feet a minute descent rate. About 500 feet a minute descent rate. So big ears doesn't really make this thing come down quick, quick, quick. But 500 feet a minute will still allow you to get out of any form of cloud suck without having to spiral and still keep in control. So I'm going to turn around to the right. Not big, big ears, but then I haven't got speed bar, and you do need speed bar if you're going to do big, big ears, because the drag increase means you need to lower the angle of attack to make yourself fly, or you can risk stalling. Okay, I'm going to go one out, two out, and recover without any form of pumping. They're almost out by the time I release the strings. Quick hazel check. Do some wing overs. On the slow setting. Oi, makes you go light quite quickly. Wow, that does make 
Why you go round quick? You do need to bleed the energy off. There's no way. No way you'd be able to get that out quickly. This wing just doesn't want to come down. Engine off. Leaning fully forward. Whee! <laughs> and there we go. Not much wind. See if I can walk it back in. It's the height of laziness. I can't be bothered picking my wing up, so I'm just going to walk it back. Okay, it's out of my head and come down. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Right, that's a very, very unique wing. I've never flown a wing that can do so much in two different trimmer settings. After the flight you saw in the video, I took the wing out later in the evening when the winds were actually getting a little bit stronger just to see what it was like in the reverse handling scenario. And I found the wing just so solid and so easy to handle. You could, kiting it was just ease. I couldn't actually bring the wing down at one point. It did not want to come out of the sky. In the circuit, it was just so much fun. You could make the wing go really slow and then trim it out and come in really fast if you wanted to. The wing just handled the whole range of conditions from light through to heavy and I think that's why so many people actually like this wing. Trim it right in, it's a beginner wing, it's very very safe, it's stable, it soaks up the bumps like a Cadillac, it just rides them out. When you trim them out you feel a little bit more, the brake pressures are a bit higher, harder but it just gives you so much more speed and so much more dynamic handling. Um, so really, you've got a basic beginner wing and a low-end intermediate wing all wrapped into one. So for me, the Judec Universal 1.1 is a very unique wing. I've not flown another wing like this before that allows you to progress from beginner through to early intermediate. And that is what I think so many people are carrying on flying this wing. I'll leave this video there, but if you've got any questions, please drop them in the comments. But until next time, everybody, fly safe.